Hello, everybody. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the agenda today, we're going to talk about Edgewood, um, HR onboarding, accounts payable process with forms, um, the travel request settlements, and also we added warehouse forms and how we use forms in the warehouse department. Uh, we have 20 campuses at our district, uh, two high schools, three middle schools. We've got 10 elementaries, three Head Starts, and uh, an alternative in the Fine Arts uh, Academy. We have about 12,000 students, uh, 1,800 employees, and we have 33 operations and curriculum departments for the district. Currently, we have 180 full user license. We have Rio. Uh, we have Quick Fields. Uh, we also have the Leisurefish. We use the mobile. Uh, we use the public portal, and then also we have our web forms. I'll we'll discuss HR forms first. Maybe a little bit blurry. This is basically a list of all HR forms that are uh, listed here that are live. As you can see, um, they have a lot of forms as to status change forms or uh, moves or someone they want to uh, resign, things like that. This is just a quick glance of what we have in the district. So one of the things that we do is, um, you know, since there's so many forms and what we do with our department is we have to make sure which form to use. So as you're working with your forms, make sure you list that. So we have a new hire form. Uh, it used to be a packet of maybe 25, 30 uh, sheets, now we downgrade it to about five sheets with uh, the form. Uh, the ability with forms is you don't have to keep re-inputting your first name, last name. You can go ahead and populate it throughout the form and when you print it out. And so same thing with the status change form. What's that used for a uh, current district employee with a job status on their uh, job change? And then a PR, if you're going to do a form that you, you know, you're going to recommend somebody, that's another form that we did. And then the resignation and retirement form, that's really... Uh, we never had that available for everybody. You would have to come into HR, so now they're able to do it from home. They can do it from in their classroom. And also, we added the part where they can ask uh, survey questions, just so we can see as a district, you know, how we're doing. <clears throat> the, to the left, that's what the desk used to look like for all our departments. So if you have your HR department, this is probably what you may see. And to the right, this is what it looks like now. Uh, you walk in there, new hire forms. Um, we actually went back, we hired some subs, and we started scanning all employee information. And so we also put that into LaserFish. So, and now we just use that with the workflow. Um, they're pretty much like students that have already graduated. We showed them how to do the LaserFish, and they were able to copy the stuff that we had into LaserFish. And so it was very busy. They couldn't find things. Things will get lost. Sometimes you have to, as a director, couldn't find who I recommended. We have to re-put the information, so it takes longer. Missed the board meeting or something, so. The other thing we did was now we have TVs that are set up in the HR department. So for the employees, when they're working, because with the forms, they have an iPad. And it's connected to the TV. So everything they're doing, they, a new employee will come in. They'll fill out everything off the iPad, which is the form. So we're not having them fill out the paperwork and then try to add it in there. We're letting them do it for us live. So as soon as they tap everything in, we have given the ability to let our HR department create the email accounts. So they're able to create the email account at that time. And at the same time, our contracts are online. And so if it's a professional person, we'll go ahead and send them the contract. They'll log on through the iPad, and they can receive it and go ahead and accept the contract right through there. So it's a process that we used to take longer, and we just shorten it up just a one-time visit when they visit with HR. HR onboarding, this is our new hire inputs to Social Security numbers. So basically, this is an example where they would just fill this information out. So if you have your own forms, this is what it basically would look like. You just take it from that form on a paper and place it into the form for your fish. And, uh, you know, if we have their information, we have School Recruiter, which is already an online system when they're uh, applying for a position. We pull that data also, so we have that into a database. And so when they're typing the information, they automatically start populating everything that's on this form. Here we have three different sections in. Uh, the, on, the onboarding form, this used to be several pages, and through LaserFish uh, forms, you can go ahead and take out the username, um, the, their address, and things like that that you're asking for each form. And so through here, we just took the sections from each important um, file that they had and placed it in there. So we have the authorization to release uh, information. They just check off the information. But when we print it out, it'll put their first name, last name, the way it was before, but with the forms, you can shorten it out because you create tokens and you can say, okay, grab their first name and then place it in this section when later on when you print it. So 
this shortens your, um, this is all what the person will, will be doing on the iPad when they're there in front of the employee. After they're done filling this out, what happens is this is the HR onboarding uh, for the HR use. So this is what HR will do in the back end. The person's in charge of uh, how much the person should be making, what they're going to be biweekly, things like that. So they'll receive this form after it's been done for the new employee, and they'll type in the ID number, uh, which is the employee number that's in the system. We have a lookup that goes to our database. All the information's there. As soon as they type that in, then it populates everything that's in the system. And then at the end, they'll go ahead and put uh, the pay frequency if it's a monthly, biweekly, or hourly. So once that's done, an email sent to uh, risk, payroll, PINs, and technology because we need to let them know this is a new employee. Before that's, I mean, if anybody works in technology, if you've got a new employee, sometimes you don't know. Same thing with a status change form. If you don't know in the system, we build it. So when there's something that changes, we automatically email once it's been submitted at the very end that this is a new person, a new change, so the system can do that for you. And at the same time, what happens though, when they go to payroll or risk, after they visit with HR, the system's already, all the information's in the system. They don't have to refill information. We have other forms that are there for those departments and all the data's already there. So it cuts the time for them to be at the HR and then they can go ahead and get started. This is an example of the action history of the form. On the bottom, you see it's start, then it goes to HR director, chief and finance operations officer. We have the uh, superintendent approval, position control, and uh, we go to a professional HR. So if it's a professional position, we have that person in line, and that's a decision making that you can make it do. So if it's someone who is just working in transportation, it's an hourly employee, it'll go to a different route. And then from there, it goes to the compensation administrator, and then to risk, and then the payroll. And what's great about this, when you're using the forms, you're able to go back and track, well, where is it at? Was it not completed? You can see the times that it was completed. You can see, um, you know, you're able to go back and, and view what's taking so long. And so this is a, a great thing for our district as to we can get things moving along. This is the workflow that we use within LaserFish Forms. Uh, we got the pattern matching, so it's a TIFF. It's an image that comes from the forms. And so it's in there looking for their username and their, and their first name and their last name, finds the entries. After it's done, it replicates entries for us. So basically that's folders. Under each folder, each employee, we have uh, the internal employment history, we have service records, and we have like their certifications. They're separate folders. So when you're a new employee, once you go in the system, it'll automatically create all those folders underneath the employee's folder name that we created. So you're not having to go and create the folder and create all the separate folders. <laughs> with the workflow, once we hit submit, automatically does everything for you. And this is an example of where everything's stored. We store everything in our employees, uh, active employees, and we have inactive employees. And then we do everything through their last name of their letters. So we got uh, A through Z. We put it in there as G for myself will be under the G folder for Gavon. And then we saved, we named the folder as Gavon, comma, Adam. And that's how we do it for this. We also tie in, um, Risk and payroll, we let them have access to certain things in here so that they can uh, not have to ask HR, can I please see, you know, what was that form and can I see that paper? That's sometimes that, that you may see happen. <clears throat> we had a lot of arguments and things like that that they're back and forth, the departments. So now they can all log in from their computer and see this new employee's information without having to send emails or wait or go visit that person that's already there when the first time they visited uh, HR for the new hire. And this is a resignation form that we talked about earlier. This is um, basically if I'm an employee and I'm going to go ahead and decide I got another position, I can fill this form out. I don't have to go to HR. I put in if I'm a professional, we have the check boxes that are there. Uh, you can put in the date. The date's already there. We got the employee number, so I would type my number. I'll automatically fill out everything in the fields. And then at the same time, you can upload. If I got a, a file that I need to upload or something like that, I have the option to upload that file or maybe I have a letter I want to show to the superintendent, I can put that on there. And basically, this is a form that we had, again, in HR, but we had several forms. An example is that when they would do this form, they would have to take it to all the personnel to get approved. And then once it got approved, we had another form that would go out to, can we please post this position? So through here, uh, now the superintendent will be able to get it. He gets it first. 
And when he receives it, he has the option, only he sees it on the form, the option to say, go ahead and post this position. I accept the resignation and go ahead and post the position. So we just cut that time from what it was before, getting signatures, tracking it down to now, we can go ahead and post this position as soon as if he approves it. And that section is in there. And this is an example. We just did survey questions just so how we know how we're doing as a district. And then at the end, what happens? Um, HR will receive this if it's been approved. Um, there will be information they put in for the daily rate, their last date, a uh, number of days that they have worked uh, from the beginning of the year. And so what they do is once this information is in there, again, an email will be, this will, the form, once it's complete, it goes to the next in line, which is uh, risk and payroll, because they also need to know what's going on. But you don't have to send uh, an email. You don't have to do anything. The system will do it for you. And then also an email sent to PEMS, to staff development, and also to technology, letting us know, remove this person or disable their, their account at this time and this date. So before, we would never know. I mean, technology was like we never knew. And so that's a lot of things that we saw. PEMS was the same way. I mean, if you're in the school district, you got student information. If you don't delete that account, they can still have access to that information. So this is one way that, that we were able to do it without having to have one person type in the emails. You just set it up in the system through forms, and it automatically does it for you. This is an example of the workflow of the process and forms. And as you can see, when you first start this as an end user, it's an email notification, so it lets you know that it did get turned in. And if you're approved or denied as an end user, you will get that email letting you know if the superintendent approved it or he did it, so you'll know what's going on. If it's approved, it'll go to HR. HR reviews it, make sure there's nothing that they have on file. Maybe there's something we also double check, was there any equipment that it may have, or we check with the departments, things like that. So that's what HR's job is to do. And then it goes to the compensation administrator, which is what I explained earlier, that they need to know, hey, how much do we pay them, how many days, you know, so that's what they need to do determine that's what her job is and at the same time we save this information to laserfish and so once all this information is there it will save into laserfish so it's there so when it goes throughout the form throughout the other users they have access to view it the uh, position control for us is very important because she's in charge of all your positions in the district so she needs to know if this job is no longer if it's rift or if it needs to be filled she knows what to place in there for vacancy and it's just something they keep track so for us, we're already going to start doing our, um, you know, recommend, recommendation as to who we're keeping for employees for next year. We're already doing that uh, next month. We're, we're just planning ahead, just with budget, just to make sure. So that's why she's in there as, as through this workflow. And as I said, it was HR admin, HR lead admin. So if it's professional, it's a professional position that's leaving, or if it's a pair that's uh, hourly, one of those persons will get that up there on top. So you make that decision right here in the routing decision. Then it comes over here and it goes through. After it's completed, that's where we put go to payroll, go to the payroll supervisor to approve what payroll uh, employee did and also risk and the same thing risk manager. But all this we used to do with the a paper, with the form, you know, um, going to a copy machine, faxing it, scanning it, you know, so that's just all of that, especially with technology. You know, if you're in that department, you don't have to worry about hard drive, I mean, storage space and things like that. It's all in the system. So, you know, you're saving money there, you're saving money in time and accountability of what's been done. Does anybody have any questions before we move on from HR? Yes, sir. Yes. So he wants to know with the HR forms, do we print them? And at the same time, when do we do it? And then do we print them as a PDF form? And so when they, again, when they're working with the iPad, they have the option through our form, when they're done submitting it, they can email it, and then they can print it. Some users, of course, like to you know, have it printed just so they can have it. But since we already have their email account set up at that point, at the same time, we can also email it to their personal account just so they can have their contracts and things like that. It has that option that's on there. So when you submit it on the very top of the form, once you submit it, it'll let you know, thank you for uh, submitting this form. And on the top, you have those three options. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
wanting to know if, if how do we tackle this uh, the department forms uh, using laser fish forms and so what we did was we used we looked at all their paper we looked at all their forms that they were doing and so we first started in the district using laser fish uh, for account accounts payable and how we changed their process we don't use the paper no more invoicing and all that it's all done through workflow and so once they saw that they were like how can we get rid of this paperwork the other thing was the superintendent got tired of signing all these documents you know and at the same time you know if he's not in his office with LaserFish forms, he can be anywhere. And on his phone, on his computer, off his tablet, he can approve one of these uh, forms. And so that was one of the push. So he's like, hey, let's make this paperless. So Amando and I worked with HR. We went through all their forms. We got all their sheets of forms and we said, okay, what's important? The other thing is too, if no one's ever taken the time to do that, the, qu the answer has always been is, this is always the way it's been. So if you don't talk about it, then they're gonna keep doing it that way. And that's what we saw. There's even sometimes what we would see them, the HR employees, because they're afraid that the system would lose it, they would print it out still again. And so we would have to constantly be on them, like, no, it's in the system. And so once we showed them a couple of steps, we did the uh, status change form. That was big. Because throughout the year, as a director and from the other PMs department, you don't know when people are moving. You know, all that stuff is approved, and they're not going to go and announce it. You know, unless you went to the school board and you saw what was going on. But sometimes there's things that don't go to the school board you know, meetings. So basically this was another thing. What, let's push this information because the time for that new teacher to go to the next uh, campus, they never had access, you know, for technology reasons. And so that was another reason that we did. So once we did that, we showed them the process. We showed them how long it took. And then they, were, they started like, okay, well, we got this form. And we got another form. And as you saw in the beginning, all that whole list was nothing but HR. All those forms are nothing but HR because they started saying, you know what, we don't need this no more. We can change this form. Um, just an example would be like your W, um, your W2s, I think, at the ones that we can change your dependents. We have that as a form. They can fill that out. They put the social to confirm that this is who I am. And that's one way. Because the other thing is, is that our employees for HR, uh, they're only there maybe to 430. Where well, our teachers are teaching to 330, 345, then they get after school. It's hard for them to make it to HR. And so by doing this, it just made it more usable for the teachers to have access to those forms. So it was more about user base. Yes, ma'am. What was the timeline that that came into? How long did that take? The timeline to make this change, I think more than probably about a, about a month. Uh, yes, because what happens is we, with our, with our boss, basically we have meetings with the secretaries. He said, you know what? They're our bread and butter. They have to know what's going on. We start realizing we're telling principals, we're in other meetings. That, that information never gets to the secretaries. And so every month, the beginning of the month, we have a meeting. Any updates, anything with forms, anything with laser fish, anything with uh, PPS or technology, we let them know. And so at that time frame, that's how we do it, with um, just basically talking to them about what's coming down the line, and then they spread it across at their monthly meetings with uh, the campus. And so the forms was just working with them and then changing it. So it's really easy. I mean, how long does it take you to make a form real quick? Uh, it takes me about 20 minutes, yeah. just depending. So what the hardest part is really coming back and figuring out what is the flow of the form. You know, why does that person have to see it? So that's what we've ended up taking out. That person doesn't need to see it. That person doesn't need to see it. So it starts making you realize who should see what, and that's what we changed. Yes, sir. How do we handle the changes that we did for uh, paper to digital? Uh, basically, we just kept having those meetings. Uh, we started showing them how, as an end user, as you'll see later on as warehouse form, you never know what's in warehouse until you, you have to keep calling or, or they'll call you. But we started showing the benefits of what they would receive. The other thing what I did is the thing when I started in accounts payable was I gave every secretary a new computer and two monitors. So, I mean, not everybody can do that. <laughs> But it, it was something to let them know, look, we're going to help you out. And because we already knew, you know, we're adding, we're making them change as people have been there for 30, 40 years. So you got to think about like, what am I going to get? It's always about me, you know, and it, for them at the campuses. So they were happy because here's two 24 inch monitors and they got one to look at with their email and the other one they can do forms, they can go into our Texas information. So it just makes their life easier. And that, you just got to get buy in, you got to work with them. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, we have school recruiter. Basically, uh, it's you know so that you can go and, and um, there's job applicants you can fill that out. Uh, what happened when all this started happening was I got into every, um, just like Laserfish, every business software that was out there. Usually our businesses, they'll buy a software for one thing. They pay all this money and they don't even know how to use the other parts of the software. So I started getting into that, to Time Clock and to other products that they had at the, at the administration building, which is what populated his position, so that we can help with that. And so they did have some stuff. You can, we, we went in, we started making our, um, when we're doing interviews, it's now paperless. We can do it with tablets, and we did that stuff. They never were doing that. I showed it to the curriculum director, the chief, and she was like, oh my god, I want this now. So we have laptops. They fill out the questions. It's easier to score. All the information is there. And the only thing we do is anything that's a form that they need to fill out, we'll have it through HR. And then they'll go and uh, do the laser fish forms, and they'll fill that out that way. But it, it was hard to, they only use a, a, a tenth of that software. And so I had to rate that. Would that software give me what we needed? And so we would made updates on that software, and it didn't give us everything what LazyFish Forms does. And so that's why we just used it to keep track on that, and it's bring it in. <coughs> we also use ASOP. I'm not sure if you're aware of ASOP, but that's for our subs. Same thing. They use a tenth of it. A lot of it was using emails. No one knew how many times we had subs. So we got reports of which campus, with the reasons why. So we changed everything. Budget's already in there. So Less steps that we did. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm loving the slides you showed and that and getting the confidential nature of that. How did you handle that in terms of limiting access or maybe encouraging people to add to the student? Yes, sir. So basically the question is on medical, when we create the folder for each employee, how do we limit the access? Well, basically, what we do is, again, on the, under the employee section, we share that with payroll, and we also share the risk. Well, there's a folder. They have their own folders. And under medical, it's under HR. And so the only users who have access to that, when we're creating those, they have the rights, only HR does. And then there's another folder we put in there is miscellaneous, basically. So anything that all those departments should have access to, we place it in there. And that you can just put your rights, and you do everything through the workflow, and it just populates everything. It's an easy process, but that was very important in the beginning, the medical, because it took us a while to figure that out because we're like, we have to do this, but without having to repopulate, like manually go in there and put medical. So we figured that out, but that's just what, with the workflow. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. Accounts payable processing. Um, basically, we're going to talk here. This is some of the stuff that we had. We did workflow and things like that, but we're just going to talk right now about forms based off what they do. Uh, if you want to know information on how we did everything, we can do that. But we want to just talk about forms uh, in this department. Uh, but again, accounts payable was filing cabinets, boxes full. I mean, maybe your departments are like this. This is what it was. Um, you know, user lim emails limit when PDFs were sent back and forth, when they needed to find out, okay, well, where's the quote? Where's the support? I mean, it adds up. You know, and so you start looking at the, also no, no accountability. I mean, right now, even today, even because we have the system in place, <laughs> You know, if someone still doesn't put those rules down, we have some people, my, my vendors, that have not been paid since September. And that's an issue. You know, but with our um, dashboards, we can see it. But again, you know, we're not on that side to question. So again, they use that later to say, hey, why didn't you do it, and stuff like that. But, but again, that's some of the, the ability now where you would have accountability. They didn't have that before. And then also, um, I always joke about it, but purchasing, we now can see when purchasing approves something without looking at support. Because through LaserFish, if, if we look it up, we look for that requisition, and we don't see that support in there, then we know that PO was approved without it. And I would always joke, you know, I'm just gonna buy a vehicle, put it in the system, and may, our purchaser may not catch it. You know, and that was in the beginning, because it was like that, that bad. So then with this system, it made him more accountability. He couldn't make up a story or say anything different. This thing said everything, so. Also, again, um, the end users save requisitions, supporting documents into LaserFish. That's at the end user side. Um, purchasing approves our PO process with supporting documents, and that's what's changed. Um, purchasing moves PO into LaserFish, and uh, basically we use quick fields. So when purchasing gets a PO, they basically use quick fields just to scan the PO. And then we look up the metadata through our database and automatically will populate everything through there and then save that PO into the system. So when an invoice comes in later on, they'll type in that PO, and then they'll grab that information, put it behind that invoice, then it goes to the compensation, 
person and she looks at it, she approves it, and then it moves on to get ready, ready to get paid. And so all that we've done, it's not through forms, but that's just the process that we've changed through laser fish and uh, workflow and things like that that we've created. And one of the nice things too is to let the end users know that things got paid. Because as an end, my vendors are calling me, I'm not sure if they got paid or not. But so when we pay something at the very end, we're able to put an email back to the end user and let them know this PO was paid. And this is kind of a description of how we save our folders in the workflow. And that's we got it, AP purchase orders. That's where they drop it down there. Now QuickFill does that. As soon as it does that, it goes by the vendor name, it goes and places a copy of that PO and under the vendor folder, and then places another copy in under uh, accounts payable so they have it there ready to get uh, it's a, uh, pending. It's a pending PO, and that's what happens once they place it into that folder. Uh, there's our incoming invoices. So we have a folder. We have uh, three ladies that through A through G, and then it's broken out O through, I think, P, and then Q through Z. And basically, inside the incoming invoices, that's where we drop it in there, they place in that folder, and it's under that user will know that's my task for the day. Those are the invoices I gotta get paid. And so they'll go in the system, they'll look at it, they'll make sure, okay, this is the item I need to pay, and as soon as they say everything looks good, it'll go and grab the PO and everything else that's behind it and send it over to compensation. And we got a requisition support. This was in, that we added later because of the fact that the purchasing had trouble going to the campuses and looking under their folders for their support. So we created a, a, a folder called requisition support. And basically what happens once they put in a requisition from any campus or department, automatically a copy gets moved over here and it's the newest date is on top. So when they're looking at a PO, that's a requisition that wants to get approved, they'll look at that and then they can double check the support that it's in there. And so that's kind of what we do in the back end. Before, it was an email sent back and forth, and then from there, there's more emails sent back to accounts payable. So all that, we're not having to do no more, accounts payable side. One of the things is just to make sure on the accounts payable department side is just to make sure you're doing the patience with your employees, don't want change. Uh, those, that's always happening for us. Uh, there's plenty of excuses, so just be patient with them. Provide plenty of training, handbook provided. Uh, also, we do a bunch of PowerPoints, and we put them on, on the system so they can have access to it. And then keep following up with the departments, making sure everything's fine. And sometimes, the Mondo has to sit with them maybe all day just to work with them, like, and let them understand or if they have concerns. On the accounts payable side, we have pay, partial pay forms. So basically, these are your open POs. So let's just say uh, I do a whole PO for the whole year, and then I have September that has already passed by, so I go in. I'll put it for Home Depot, $200, put in my information. I have um, a selection there so I can uh, upload my file, which is my receipt or my invoice. I'll put it into the system. And at the same time, it gets moved over to accounts payable. Um, from there, they, they can also have the option to liquidate the funds. So let's say if I used, had the open PO but I don't need it no more, I, can, I have the option to do it this way. So basically, all those were forms that they used to do, and that would go to our boss. Now, it's all in the system through the laser fish forms. Oh, I'm sorry, the same thing is also where our consultants. Uh, a lot of school districts, you know, we use a lot of consultants, so we'll put that information in here on the education side, and basically the same thing, they just put this information. They'll put also what the reasoning why and, and all that, and so then they'll go to their chief uh, academic, so then once she approves it, then it goes accounts payable and she knows it's ready to be paid. And this is an example of the open, of the PO, open POs. As you can see, you can, for support, you can upload. You put the invoice number, partial pay or final pay, and then you put the payments and then you put the budget code. And then after it's done, then they'll automatically put the total on the bottom. And this is the example of the consultant. So we have our contract number that we have with that um, consultant. And same thing with the information. So before it would just be an email sent and things like that. So now, because the other thing is important too with laser fish forms is that if that person's not here, or maybe they're out because you know uh, they're out for for any any other reason, maybe for a couple months. You don't have to go dig into those emails. It's all into the laser fish database, the repository, and you can get everything you need from there. <coughs> we also have validation memos. So I am. I'm sorry. Okay. 
Okay, so the question is, do we scan our POs into LaserFish and do we integrate them to our, into our system, financial system? So what we do is we use quick fields. So at the end of the day, or we do it at lunchtime, we have all the POs they approve for that day and we run that through quick fields. Quick fields goes and just gets the PO number out of the system, out of each scan. Once it's done, it does a lookup into our financial system, into the database, and it'll automatically populate everything for us. The vendor, who it was, the total cost, so everything we used to do before, before we started looking at doing this lookup and doing some other stuff, it was all typed in and they were always complaining because they're like, it's too much work and things like that. So now it's just QuickFields does the work for us and then the PO automatically at the end will be moved over to um, new POs. Yeah. So it's good to be able to tie into your databases if you do because all the information was already entered when they did the requisition. So it's there. So you just got to find a way to tie that into the form or into workflow so it can just pull that data for you without having to retype it. Yes? Are you using quick agents to do that automated scanning or is there someone else that's using quick fields? We have someone that used quick fields and we just got the agent because we're going to start using um, quick fields for other things and so we got the agent for that reason. But before it would just be the uh, purchaser who would just use that. And this is just an example of validation. So I'm in charge of fire alarms now. And basically when they come out or something happens, we do use the validation memo. The, we'll fill it out and then we'll just put what the cost was. There was no PO. There was nothing beforehand. It was an emergency. So this is another example of maybe you have that in your department or your uh, area. This is another form that we created. So again, this is just another form that my boss was having to sign and then sign and sign. So now they just go and just click on it, approve, and then it moves on its, on its way. And this is more an example of the validation memo. As you can see, we have the invoice detail. If there's an invoice that we received from that fire alarm company, and then we can put if it's an urgent repair, um, any, anything else that has to do with your reasonings why you have to get it paid but you didn't have a PO. And this is what we do for our district. We have also a move on. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Signatures. signatures, we have sometimes on some of the forms we have the wet signature part and then we have it all tied in. We checked with our auditors and everything's tied into when they approve on the form. We can see when they approve. Yes. And yes, and it's also with their Active Directory account and all that. As you showed earlier, where it showed what time and who approved it, that's where it's all tied into there. And so we checked with our auditors to make sure uh, that was the final approval and they said yes. And that'll hold up the lawsuits or do Yes. Yes. That was our whole thing. Because again I mean, again, the auditors love it. I mean, when they come in, we have an auditor account. They'll come in for HR. They'll come in for payroll or something. They just sit on the computer, and they start researching. They're in. They're out. They don't have to go find no more files in the back and look for everything's in the system. But yes, definitely it, it passed. But make sure you check with the auditors to make sure it does. OK, we'll talk about travel requests and settlements. Uh, the travel form uh, is used to approve travel and, and basically one of the things that's important for us is that if you're traveling with a student out of town, we have to make sure we select that because we need to make sure the superintendent's aware of it and you have that approval. So right, if someone does select that, then through the, the process, it'll go to the superintendent to approve. If we don't select that, and then it goes the, the normal routes. So if we're going out of state, me, myself, and Amando, we had to fill out this form. Uh, if we need a district vehicle, funding source, which budget's going to come out of, all the information that we used to have on the form, we have it in here. Uh, we can also, all the calculations that we're doing in here, so we can automatically estimate everything that we're doing. So when you're doing your hotels, your mileage, your per diem, at the very bottom, uh, it'll show the total of everything that you entered. So you're not having to add it yourself. We have the calculations in the form to calculate everything that's in the system. Now, what happens after, let's say, when we come back, we'll, we'll give them our receipts, and our secretary will go in there. She'll look at the forms pending. She'll see it, that there's a travel for us. She'll click on it. She'll open that up, and all the information is there. She just puts in the support, and then she puts submit. But this is after that we had to get either my boss or the superintendent to approve it. So we didn't have to send two forms or three different forms or what you may have in your um, area, we just send one form, go through the process, all the data is saved for us, so when we come back, we just put in our receipts and then we hit submit. 
and then it goes to accounts payable. It doesn't have to go back to our boss because he's already approved everything that was already pre-approved. Any questions? Okay, we'll go ahead and go next to warehouse form. Um, basically, what started this form was we were waiting for 100 computers and I think I only received 80 and uh, again, we could not know when they got into warehouse, when they received it. So there was no way to, for us to check and this is the way our system is right now. So we would call and then to come to find out they had them in the back room and so that was frustrating too. So uh, again, so we said, you know, we got to help them out with the form. So uh, basically this is the warehouse receiving form. What happens is when you receive the, your items, maybe it comes in with 10 computers, 10 iPads, we are able to see the PO number that's listed there. So from there, we type in the PO number, automatically will populate the vendor, the campus that ordered the equipment, and then the email, the original uh, creator for that. Now again, this is information that's already tied in when you did your requisition and then you did your PO and everything was approved, it's in your, if you can't get access to your financial database, that's where all our information is. So with this information there, we're able to turn around and I can select the first item section so I know that this PO has four items. There's four items in this PO. So I can check from there, the next slide will show us this is the four items. Automatically we'll pull the description off and then also automatically pull the cost. So here, warehouse will go in and say, yes, I received it. And then they'll also go ahead and put the delivery date. So when they, say, they already know, okay, we can deliver this at this time, they'll put that information in there. Again, because my email's in there that we put in there, we go ahead and have the email sent to me because I'm the creator. So I know here's the items that have been received. This is everything that's, that I ordered. Then I can also check, well, there's one item that's back ordered. So I can see that. Also know when it's gonna be delivered. At the same time, the warehouse scheduler is putting it on another calendar so that anybody can check on that calendar. We have our warehouse guys that have barcodes, um, mobile barcode printers, so they can print barcodes real quick, place it on the, the items, and at the same time, they have um, some window tablets that they can turn around and have access to all this. And so they're just there organizing this stuff, and then we have uh, GigaTrack is what we do for our inventory for all our stuff, and so again, everything's in the database. So anything that's being entered there, we're automatically being sent over to the GigaTrack database and uploaded there. So it's letting us know it's already been. So we're not having to do double or triple the work that from different uh, databases. So if you got databases, you have access to your stuff, you can grab that database and share it across to another database and just tie it into either for us, everything's based off of requisition or PO number. They're all the same. And if anything you do, the PO number will have your everything for vendor, campus, who was originator, what they ordered, we're able to see that. We're also able to see in our dashboard, um, we're able to see when things are getting paid. So we pull that information out, we see what check number was ran, and then we can see all the items that were listed in there because we tie the databases together. So it's just little things that the reason why you do this is also you can keep track. Uh, for us, for the school district, the other thing is, is that we need to know if we're spending anything over 25,000. So if this vendor is already over 25,000, we know we have to go to the board. You know, I got people who, hey, we already spent more than 25,000 on iPads for uh, Apple. They're like, can we go to Walmart? You know, can we go buy something from here? So they're trying to find it because now they know, oh, this is where our money is spent. So it just, it's, it makes it easier so that you have to spend the time to do the requisition and at the same time get denied because it's got to go to the board for approval first. As an example of the form of how we created it. Basically, we used a table in there. So uh, again, you can add the items. So let's say if there's only two items that came in, they can just keep those two items there. Uh, this is how we built it on the form. Just, you just have little templates, you bring them over, and you just fill them out what you want. And then this is the lookup. This is how we're doing our database. So you have access to your financial database. You run a database uh, lookup. So we're saying lookup database, we called it warehouse. And when they put in a PO number, match it with a PO number that's in the database, automatically grab that information, the items that are listed under that PO number that's in your database. So we're telling that that's what you do in the forms, this is how you do it. And then at the same time on the bottom I have, when you do the PO number, do the description, and then do the cost. So as we wanna know to make sure if there's a cost or that you wanna know what was on there that you received, you know what, what you should be doing from there without having to call or look it up on your Texas system or any other financial system. Again, this is a repeat of our tips and things that we have. Um, 
I also encourage your feedback from your users when you're doing this, making sure, you know, again, when we first started, they were against it, but afterwards they were like, okay, can you make changes? Can you make it do this? You know, and that's how we changed. We, we, and nothing was the same from before. I mean, it's all changed just because the end users start seeing, uh, you know, they don't tell you everything they do because they don't want you to know their steps. But little by little, they start telling you, well, this is what we do now. Can you change that? And that's what's great about the system that we like. It, it doesn't take, it's not that long to, take, uh, to make a change. And when you're working with workflow, if you've got all the other forms in there, you can turn around and make the change and it will change everything else that's in the system. And so that helps us move forward with that. But also make sure you keep everyone updated with any with uh, updates that you're doing. Uh, for us, we made every, uh, for Christmas break, we let everybody know no more POs at this certain time, no more requisitions, because what we're doing is we're going to do updates to the system. So just little things like that you got to do, because if not, you know, if you do an update, then you can lose a form or something that they're pending on. Uh, some of the stuff that we do with HR, we have HR that can go now. They're out of you know hiring. They're trying to hire from another university or something from teachers. Right then and there, because with Laserfish and because of how we have everything, we can go ahead and sign them, have them fill out the information, send the contract, superintendent real quick will approve it, and then we already have a contract with that teacher. You know, teachers. You know, great teachers are hard to come by, so. We're, we've changed that, you know, and we'll have a monitor out there too. We set it up real quick that way. And we've got other, you know, districts in our area that are asking, how are you doing that? You know, of course our directors and they're like, we don't know. <laughs> but again, they see what we're doing, you know, the process of being able to access forms. When I was in Australia, I had, you know, forms coming to me and I was able to prove and I was showing them what I was doing. All the way over there, I was approving forms without being in the office. So it just keeps your process and things going. Uh, just making everything more accountability. Any questions, paper or paperless? Yes, sir. Uh, how we decide with workflow approvals or through uh, forms is that we've always did everything with workflow until forms came out. And once forms came out, we changed everything over to forms so that we could. We prefer forms. It's easier. Uh, it's a lot simpler for the end user. All everybody has an iPhone. They also have. Uh, it's just so much easier. Yeah, we have the mobile capability, but you know, it's just simpler for them. Just to, especially with the updates, you don't even have to look at the whole form. You can just click approve. So that was the better way to do it for us. But workflow at that time was the only way, and so that's what we moved to. But we moved away from that. Yes, ma'am. Um, have you guys used any uh, simultaneous approvals, say, being someone else under approve something, and it doesn't necessarily have to go through the process? Yes, we have that for curriculum, the same approvals. Like if I want Ms. Miller to approve it or Ms. Donius to approve it. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. It's just in the. It's just really in the business process. So um, yeah. on the business process that we were showing, earlier here, you make the decision, do you want both of them to approve it at the same time? Or you make the decision either or approve it, but it gives you the ability to do that. The problem is if, if you're waiting for both of them, the other person may not be here for a week. So you, know, you want to make sure that you have that. Now, another important thing when you're doing forms, though, if you decide to do it, make sure you have a Laserfish admin account tied to every form. Because if someone's not there, if they're out for whatever reason, then with Laserfish account, we can log in and improve that form for them and then put a reason why. And we always have our comment boxes on every form. And so that's, uh, that's just to let us know, hey, she's not here, but this is what happened. So just to make sure it keeps it going. Because not sometimes you have to go back and delete it and start over. And a lot of people hate to, to start over and do a form. Any other questions? Yes, sir. When you travel, I assume you uh, do an application on air for each one of your flights? Yes, I do. Yeah, I have a district credit card for my department, so like I booked my flight to come here, and then what I did was put that information into my travel form, and then when I get back, I just put the receipt, and that's it. So if it's... So someone can take that and use yes. Correct. They, they look at both and they'll approve, okay, it was approved to spend this much money, and then at the total of after he came in, it shows a new total. 
And so what if I didn't go and use a, a car rental? Then they will show there was a distant, um, an item that wasn't there. And then with the form for the validation or for the um, liquidation, we can go in and liquidate that I didn't use a car rental. Yes, we do is that we, we have a, a database and so we're pulling all that information out. So everything we paid with a credit card or what reasoning, they look at that and they can compare and they can look at all the invoices and they can say, okay, here's that invoice, this is what they use. And in our invoices with workflow, we're showing the totals, the vendor, so they're easy for them to find it. And then they can do that. But we, in our database system, we're pulling anything that we paid with a credit card. So then they know, hey, we don't have to write a check to it because then you're gonna duplicate. So that's through a dashboard that we use and we're just pulling that information out. Yes, ma'am. No, not yet. We were, uh, the question was if we use iCalendar for the workflow. And with Warehouse, we were talking about doing that. Uh, we're trying to figure that out. But the, the problem is that we use, um, we have school, uh, school wires for our uh, web. So all the calendars are there. So we're kind of keeping everybody still there. We don't want to kind of make them jump around. The only thing we do for iCalendar is our uh, transportation. We use iCalendar on there because our whole system with transportation is also paperless. We use a web help desk and all our transportation bus drivers have an iPhone. They get all their, um, all the requests and things for, their, for what they're gonna travel on and what they're gonna do, they get that through the iPhone. And they can update that wherever they're at. So um, we do it through there, but not through the calendars. We kinda stay with the calendars. We want to, the other thing is you don't wanna jump around. And so the same thing for my area. In my area I have three, cha uh, three training rooms. And so we use forms for them to fill out there. And then from there my secretary would go to the calendar that's on the uh, district website and then put in that this it, meeting is gonna take place so it's not available. So then that's what you check out. It just depends on what, but we haven't tried that, but we wanna try it just to see. Because again, it's just, we're always looking at reducing our steps. You know, if we've done it in 10, can we do it again in five? And we just keep trying to do that. And so that's what we're always doing. <coughs> Any other questions? I have a question, Adam. Hmm. <laughs> So I know that uh, as the IT director at the school district, uh, you oversee a lot of uh, technology projects, right? Mm -hmm. how, how much time do you spend on LaserFish doing a district-wide district forms deployment and the LaserFish initiative? Uh, what happened was in 2010, the first Empower that we came to, me and Armando, basically, we didn't know what LaserFish was. They purchased it for the reason for special ed and HR. And then since then, we came up, we were like, wow, this product can do a lot of things. And so we went back and Mondo wasn't doing anything. He was a technician at that time, so he didn't care. <laughs> so I was there and I would be trying to figure out and again, trying to figure out like the folder section and doing that stuff with workflows. There was no forms and at the same time, you know, I, it was just, I mean, just what I wanted to do. I spent a little bit more time because I didn't know the product, but learning from what I did from here, trying to duplicate what they were, what I got taught here to do it at, at my place. Once I, I'll be at late at night, be like, yes, I figured it out, just a workflow, you know, and so the workflow started growing, but once it's in place, I didn't have that much time, I didn't really have to do too much. But what happened was when we started doing forms and things, that's when the Mondo's position needed to be created because of the fact that forms are everywhere. We haven't really hit that much in curriculum side. Health service, you know, there's a form, there's maybe they got like 50 forms. One of the things I would recommend is also to help, we created on our, we have a Microsoft, uh, we're Active Directory and all our file share folders and everything. We put uh, a drive just for forms. And so we got every department access and we start telling them, put your forms in there. Don't put it on the website, put it there. It's easier for you to get to. You don't have to log in. It's already there. It's on your computer. You, you just open up my computer and you can see the forms drive. So that just helped first get us started. And so a lot of little work, I think sometimes uh, it was a lot of work at the beginning just because it was, it was me and I was managing and they started throwing more stuff at me. I'm, I'm in charge of now, like I said, the fire alarms. Um, we're in charge of the mail carrier. We're in charge of the print shop now. And I manage about 24 people now. But once you create this position or you get some help, you need somebody. And you start looking at jobs that are out there, you'll start seeing a lot of school districts looking for that business side. That person that can do the programming, that person that can get this information because it's there. You know, sometimes we're paying as a school districts, you're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars maybe, you know, just to get all this data and to do one thing. 
you know, but if you got that one person that can be there, they can be pulling this data for you. And then, you know, with LaserFish, we're able to mold it the way you want to. We also, if you have any questions, you want to look at our dashboard that we've created. We use iDashboards, and so we're able to see all our departments, we're able to see how much they spend. So it's just using the information. But um, again, at the beginning, it took a while, because I mean, it was just, I liked it a lot, but you know, little by little, I was training Armando. He didn't know that, but <laughs> <laughs> now he knows. Yes, ma'am. I would say, are they up? We don't have anything, right? It's really nothing, just, uh, just really like the i9s is the only one yeah. that's not paperless. But again, with the i9 and stuff like that, we create, we use a PDF expert with the iPad, and so then they sign it through there, and then they do that. Same thing we do with our referees. When they're at the referees, and I think it's a W9, mm -hmm. uh, again, our referees, we're doing games and things like that. We have iPads out at the fields, and so they can use LaserFish Mobile. They can, when they're filling out the form, it'll also look up and say, do you have an account in the district? Have we already paid you? If you don't have anything on file, then we'll redirect them to the W-9. You can do that online, or you can do it on the PDF expert. Fill it out, and then it drops it into, sends an email to our purchaser. He'll grab it, place it into LaserFish, and now they're in the file. And so all that's paperless because, again, our athletic director will have to sign every single one. This person did work at that game. And so that you can imagine stacks, stacks of paper just having to pay these guys. And so. Once we started doing this, I mean, it just streamlined, uh, streamlined, uh, streamlined everything because everybody was able to get paid on time because that's, that was important. But again, using the forms, latest your fish mobile, and then just making it easier. You know, just if you, sometimes you have to use a PDF expert or another app out, out there. But uh, we have iPads. When you come to visit us at each campus, we have an iPad there. So you got rid of all that paper. You used to sign on booklets and things like that. So we use the iPad. You sign in there. It keeps track of who's visiting where. So when you want to know, you need a report, just go in the system and send an email out to, you know, I need to know a special ed. If I had someone visit there, they'll send it to the director and let them know who visited at that time. So, we, you know, little things change, not just w because of LaserFish, but we just start changing everything paperless. No more paper. <laughs> yes, sir. You mentioned you use iDashboards. Yes. Um, so where are you pulling data from? What platform? Uh, again, it's a database. So we're pulling all the database for our RI dashboards from the Texas system. We're also pulling it from our, our work order system. We have time clock. We're pulling that out. Um, anything that you can automatically get the data, and if you don't have a database, you, as long as you're getting it, you can also feed it to an Excel, dump it there every day, nightly, and the information is live, like Peams data. Are you doing anything with other dashboards? Yes. We have our other dashboard that we've had that we were able to see everything in LaserFish. We're having trouble with the forms. It's just it's not simple enough right now. Uh, we, we are able to see, you know, how many forms we approve a day, things like that, but it's not simple. And that's something we're trying to work with LaserFish so that we can try to get that dashboard up and running because we, you know, that's what our boss was the other day, like, you know how many forms I approve? I mean, he started, like, looking at it, and you can see it, but you have to dive in to see it. We're looking at a dashboard that the data is live. So with a nice with iDashboards, I mean, you just, it ties in, it's live, so we're able to see how much we spent, <coughs> everything, we can click on it, we can see every appeal that's related to that. Uh, every you know department vendor, so it's all information just tied into the database. Any other questions? No. Well, well thank yeah. thank you very much for yeah. being here. <laughs> There's our our email accounts in case you have questions. We'll be here. Uh, if you want to look at the dashboards, kind of what we're doing, we can show you that. We can also talk to you. We've done different things for different school districts also and other vendors. If you know, hey, we have this, how would it work? We'll set up a, uh, a dummy account for you guys, a demo, just so that you can log in. We'll get your form. We'll create it just so you can sell it. You know, it's always about selling. If I can change this, then I know they would want to get it and start moving away from it. So, again, I mean, for us, we, had, we removed all the printers in the classrooms. We went all copiers. So just doing that was another quarter million dollar savings because printers, ink, all that, you know, it costs money. You know, by moving to the copiers and then you start, you know, accountability, you just start changing the way things are done. So, but we can be glad to help and uh, we'll be here. Thank you very much.